<laughs> All right. How about that? Yes, absolutely. Hey, it, it's awesome. Okay, so Ian Locke here in the ONTV studios. It's live at 12 p.m. here on Wednesday, third day of the food drive here at Orion Neighborhood Television. This is our 12th annual food drive for fish. As you know, we've been doing this all week. And today, if you haven't guessed it, is Musical Performance Day. And we have George Sinnott and Peggy Berry Bartz in the studio with me today, which is always awesome. Say hi, you guys. Hey. Hello. Yep, so uh, they played us in. Uh, I'm kind of the guy doing all the business, but I will be joining you on stage for Yay. my Yay. We can't wait, debut. Ian. We can't wait to hear that guitar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you're the only one, so. Uh, oh, but, and the whole listening audience. Yes, eventually. and the whole listening audience. So here's the, this is, I, I have to share with the viewers how this all came about. Okay. So last year, uh, during the food drive, Peggy, George, and I uh, had a day where we were uh, hosting the food drive. And while some of the programming was running, and we're just in the studio talking about music and how the connection with music that the three of us have, that we had all these like experiences and how music really impacts us. So this whole setup today is really um, generated by that conversation we, I had with George and Peggy a year ago now and uh, they got me the confidence to come here to try to play live. I played live before but it's usually with a tuba and with like uh, 300 other people in a marching band right. <laughs> so this is a little more exposed but George has been great and we're gonna bring you some tunes and we're gonna learn about music. Why is it fun? Why is it healing? Why is it you know why is it so ingrained in our bones that when you hear music you just react a certain way right it just lifts your spirit so that's what today is we're going to learn some things about music uh rookie a couple seasoned pros who play music a lot um so we're going to learn from each other and have some fun today but before we get into that we're going to talk about the food drive of course so we are here it's wednesday 12 p.m uh we'll be here for uh till 2 p.m like we have all week uh but we need to talk about fish and our food drive uh, goals this uh, week are $5,000 in cash, but we've really surged past that number already thanks to our sponsors and generous donations from people like you helping out fish. And I don't know if you can see the totals on the screen. We do have a bug that will pop up there. I'm not sure what our total, I think we just got some uh, cash donations today. Uh, which really kind of launched us off. We didn't have too many yesterday, but today's really been active. Also, how can you donate? I know we have a slide for that, so let's talk about how you can donate. And you see the graphic on the screen. We have, a, uh, go to our website at orionontv.org, and you can donate by clicking the Food Drive logo, and it'll take you right to our GoFundMe account, which will be active until the end of business on Friday. And, uh, or you can donate in person. You can come along and just bring your non-perishable items over to the studio and hand them off to the staff. We're here until 9 p.m. You can drop off your food donations. And we're trying to fill that truck up, that big white production van. We have that out in the parking lot with the door open. And yesterday was a really good collection day uh, for all of us uh, at the food drive. We had, um, I think, about 10 packages dropped off, if not more. And so it was great to see those donations coming in. We also had another five uh, dropped off here in the studio. If you'd like to donate money, we talked about our GoFundMe account, which is active until Friday. But if you want to donate uh, in person cash, you can do so and we'll collect it. If you'd like to write, write a check, you can do so. And uh, the staff will take it and lock it up and we'll get it right to fish. 100% of all donations go directly to Oxford Orient Fish. And uh, yeah, it's a good thing, right? So we did uh, mention, uh, or we talked with the director of fish um, a couple days ago. And they mentioned that the cash donations are so important these days. Uh, the physical donations are important too, but the cash donations uh, these days is so important due to the inflation that we're kind of running into. Uh, the cost of uh, food and services and things like that um, at the grocery stores are going up. Um, scarcity of some items uh, are hard to get. And it's even harder for those to get uh, those items if you are in a food emergency. We understand that. So the cash donations allows fish to be strategic in the way they spend their money and get the resources that those uh, in need, uh, how we can get those resources to those in need. So if you are in a food emergency, don't hesitate. Give fish a call at 248-628-3933 right now. They've streamlined their process. In the past, you had to go through an interview process, some paperwork and all that good stuff to be uh, uh, welcomed into fish to uh, receive their resources, but no longer. You call the number or visit their website at oxfordorientfish.org and you can immediately start the process 
if you are in an emergency. We can get you those resources right now, so don't hesitate to call. Okay, some needed items if you're looking to donate uh, non-perishable food items, some needed items this year. You know, in the winter time, we like those hearty foods and the stuff that really makes you feel comfortable and fill your belly up, like cheese and stews and hearty soups. Uh, hamburger helper, like meal, those are meal prep items to help uh, jazz up your, uh, your burger, if you will. And uh, ketchup and mustard, you know, condiments are always in need to zip up your food. And um, canned uh, fruits as well, pineapple, mandarin oranges, uh, uh, peaches, all that good stuff. You know, a little sweet stuff. I, I, when I eat the uh, pineapple, it always reminds me of spring and summer. So I like eating my pineapple in the winter to go, it's coming, spring is coming. Right, so anyway, so we're glad you could join us today here at the Food Drive. Uh, without our sponsors, uh, uh, I'm gonna talk to my director. Tessa, do we have a food total somewhere we could share or a collection total we could share with uh, the people watching at home so we can get an idea of where we are so far in our collections? All right, there's the actual donation page right there. You see we are at 5535, so since I walked in today, that has gone up $400. So uh, we are at 55.35 uh, raised for uh, fish, and we want to thank all of our uh, off the street donations, the cash donations we're getting from families and kids and all that great stuff. We thank them, but we also thank our sponsors. Our corporate sponsors have been unbelievable this year, and uh, we'd like to say thank you with this video to the sponsors that we have running today. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. Today's portion of the 2022 Owen TV Food Drive is brought to you by Canterbury Village, located at 2359 Joslin Court in Orion Township. They're a first time sponsor to the Food Drive and donated $1,000. You can find more information about Canterbury Village by visiting their website, canterburyvillage.com or give them a call at 248-931-1900. Meyer of Auburn Hills, located at 800 Brown Road in Auburn Hills. They are a returning sponsor for the food drive, donating $900 toward our goal. For more information about Meyer, give them a call at 248-393-5100 or visit Meyer.com. M3 Investments, located at 99011 Main Street in Royal Oak. They're a longtime sponsor for the food drive. This year, they donated $500 to the drive. For more information about M3 Investments, you can give them a call at 248-543-3400. Kroger, located at 3097 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. This year, Kroger is a three-day sponsor thanks to a generous $300 donation to the Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry. For more information about Kroger, visit their website, kroger.com, or give them a call at 248-393-0765. The North Oakland Democratic Club, chartered by the Michigan Democratic Party, serving the North Oakland County area. The NODC is a first-time sponsor for the food drive, giving $100 to our final goal. For more information about the North Oakland Democratic Club, visit their website at nodcmi.com. Tracy Woodrow with Dobie Real Estate, located at 2211 Cole Street in Birmingham. This is Tracy's first year with the food drive. She is a one-day sponsor and brought us closer to our goal with a $100 donation. For more information, you can give her a call at 248-882-6631 or visit the website, weardobie.com. And Northern Wholesale Flooring, located at 118 Indian Wood Road in Lake Orion. Northern Wholesale Flooring is a returning partner of the Food Drive as a two-day sponsor. For more information, you can visit their website at nflooring.com. Northern Wholesale Flooring is a returning partner with the Food Drive and have always been an active part in the community. Here's a video about Northern Wholesale Flooring. Uh, 
the history, well, it was uh, back in uh, 1985, uh, Northern was founded, um, and uh, I purchased it um, in uh, early 2004. So it was uh, almost 20 years old when I purchased it. And uh, that puts us at, uh, what if I have that right, 36 years, I think, uh, 36, 37 years now that uh, Northern's been serving uh, the uh, Orion uh, community as well as surrounding communities. Times are changing, and uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in that if we don't change with them, um, then uh, then we're going to be left behind. And so, uh, yeah, you know, when I bought the store, it was uh, located there in uh, the plaza next to OPA, uh, which is uh, that plaza is most known for. And, um, and we were there for a long time. Um, and then um, I had the opportunity to buy a building on 24, which I, I did with the, uh, the intention of going to a, a more full service, high end, kind of a destination flooring store. And the reality is at the same time I was doing that, the industry was changing. And the industry was changing to a lot of online sellers and to uh, the big box stores. Uh, really the strength of the big box stores has become um, very challenging for independent retailers. And many independent retailers went away. So at that point, I uh, made the decision to change up the model. Um, and it was painful because I we had a beautiful space there and um, still that great reputation. But um, I, I believed that we needed to, uh, to evolve. And now you know, the great thing is with the floor trader, the addition of the floor trader, we have a lot more space here. We have uh, over 100,000 feet of flooring in stock and we have better buys than anybody. I mean, any big box store, um, when it comes to quality for price, there is nobody that can touch us and especially our independent uh, retail friends and, and big box and you know the Costco's and all of them. So we've created a destination that gives uh, customers what they need regardless of what end of the spectrum they're on in terms of their needs for flooring. And, um, and I couldn't have done that in that location. So as much as it hurt, uh, we, we did what we had to to be relevant uh, for today's customer. And they're, they're why we're here. So if we aren't changing for them, then I think uh, that we're making a mistake. Um, I love what we do and we're proud of our business. But the reality is um, uh, I'm a believer that it is our responsibility as a business in a small community to, um, to take care of our community. And, um, and so, you know, we started uh, many, many years ago with um, a few efforts, like we used to do packages for the troops when the, uh, we had a lot of people overseas, and we did that in honor of one of our locals that uh, passed, uh, Raymond Plower, who uh, was, uh, lost his life in the, the conflict in Iraq. And, uh, and, and so back in those days, we were there for that family, and we, we built a partnership with them. And then it just kind of evolved to any time there was a need, we tried to jump in. And, and quite frankly, I spend uh, um, way more of my time doing that at this point personally than I do on our business. And I leave that to our staff, uh, which is, uh, you know, we're real proud of them as well. Um, but the reality is there's a lot of needs. Um, most recently, obviously, Oxford uh, took over our facility, and we, we were, um, you know, kind of the, uh, the logistics hub for everything that was happening in Oxford. Uh, but right now we're dealing with uh, the fire downtown. We have a fundraiser for them this weekend. We also are collecting food for, for this food drive. And I'm looking forward to being a part of that as well and helping to make sure that you guys meet the goal. Um, so there are so many needs in our community. And, and I'd say more than, more than ever, at least it feels that way. And so um, we, uh, we believe it's our responsibility and duty to be a part of that. And, and quite frankly, we encourage um, all of you out there uh, to patron the businesses because when I when I do anything in charity we reach out to all my local business friends and there are many of them that come through time after time after time and are here for us to help us be able to take care of people when they're in need in these tragedies and um, I would encourage you to to follow me follow what we're doing and those businesses and support those businesses in the community because the reality is if if I didn't have those businesses to lean on I couldn't do what we do as a team here and as a team in the community to help others. So we, we need businesses that give back and um, we just uh, really encourage our, our locals to keep that in mind when you're making purchases. If you're buying from a big box store, not that they're bad people, but they probably aren't doing a lot in our local community. And, uh, and there's a lot of businesses that you know don't focus on the community and we just think that uh, your money would be better spent in helping those that help make our community the great amazing place that it is. You guys need to drive up here with some food, better yet, drive up with some cash. And if you're a company, 
you need to call in and you need to you need to donate some money to help keep this food pantry stocked for all of our guests so i challenge all of you join us in this fight and uh and if everybody does a little bit it's really not that challenging and we can we can do uh, great things together all right back in the studio uh here on Wednesday, the third day of the food drive here, 2022. Ian Locke, Peggy Barry Bartz, and George Sinnott join me. Uh, before we get into the music discussion, uh, I want to again thank our sponsors. Without them, we would be struggling to collect what we've collected. I think we have uh, 11 sponsors this year, and we, we added a couple late, and we want to thank uh, Joe Zimmer and 16. Oh, I was corrected. So 16 sponsors which wow. I think is a record. That's the most we ever had. And we also want to uh, thank Joe Zimmer and the guy uh, at Culver's, the owner of Culver's, for again feeding our crew today. He will uh, have his sponsor video and stuff like that on Friday when you tune in for the History Show, which we, we have coming up. We close the week out with History of Lake Orion. And tomorrow is a do-it-yourself day. So we have a lot of oh. DIY uh, programming and a live uh, DIY activity here in the studio too. So we're here. Today is music day. Now, yes, <laughs> so here's music day. Uh, my buddies here, uh, uh, Peggy and George, we were together last year this time and uh, on music day for the food drive. Yes, we were. And the funny thing was we should have had the cameras running while the videos were playing because we started talking in this really awesome discussion about our experiences with music. And, you know, George, I know, George, I've seen you play all over the place. I've seen video of you playing. You know, I, I share my musical uh, proclivities with some of my friends, but I keep it to myself for the most part. But we started talking, we had people in common, yes. uh, you know, generationally different uh, eras, but uh, we came across these different people who influenced us that really brought things together. It was wild. And then we got into really the heart of why is music important to you, me, and you, Peggy? And, and so let's talk uh, how it can be healing, it can be what it is. So that's why we're here. Try to recreate that discussion <laughs> we had a year ago um, I know it's difficult, but what does music mean to you, Peggy? So, um, first of all, it is very fun to make music. And um, I'm going to go really to the basics, back in history. Yeah. Um, I have in front of me a djembe, which is uh, our most basic uh, thing that we have in our bodies is a heartbeat. And so, it's everybody's heartbeat is a little bit different if you're in a resting position, mm. it's about one per second. You know, the good old 1001. Yeah. We all have a heartbeat. And so at some point in history, people found things to replicate the rhythm that was inside. This long before medical. Yeah. And um, I mean, even now in our, in our medical communities, if you have arrhythmia, your mm. heartbeat is not beating in a rhythmic kind of way. I it experienced causes. that uh, a year ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. Right. Yeah. And you can feel it on the you inside. You absolutely can. Yes. And so you know that Your something is rhythm. off. Yeah. A pacemaker, when you have uh, bad issues, uh, helps regulate your rhythm. Yeah. So rhythm is like a basic thing. So th I have an African djembe. These are all made in Ghana. And it is actually one solid piece of wood carved oh, out. Oh, cool. Um, it is a tree. And all of this is hand carved. That's awesome. Yes. And then whoever decides to uh, uh, make the, the, uh, the decorations on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then usually the top is a, a skin of an animal. This happens to be goat skin. Okay. And um, there's tension on it, and these are all holding that on. And so that's where you get yeah. the different... Uh, the reverberation on it. Yes. Yeah. And because you have the hole at the bottom open, the reverberation comes right through. Yeah. And you, and you can... Hear the you can't feel it at home, but you can feel it in your gut. Yes. Right, that bass, the sure that can. frequency. Yes. Yeah. So you have yes. that timber, the high, the high note from right. the skin, but you also feel the air moving. Right. Right. And in in a sense, when we start playing today, we have that electronically now. Right. right. I mean, we've got amplifiers. You have speakers of certain sizes that emit frequencies at different rates. But this feel, having organic 
bass yes. or that organic sound. There's something about it. I, and there I, is a <laughs> lot of, um, yeah, there is. And there's right? something, um, there's drumming circles all over um, where people sit and are rhythm together. Yeah. The first time I experienced this was uh, a very, very famous drummer named Bubba Tunde. And I was at a conference in, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Boca Raton, Florida. There were hundreds of us wow. all drumming. Can you imagine the song. sound? <laughs> it reverberates in through your walls. entire yeah. body. It wow. was amazing. And I had never seen this before. Wow, that's amazing. And it was awesome. So uh, after that, of course, I went and bought a djembe. <laughs> and I've, I've run a couple of drumming circles. I've been part of them. Uh, Margaret, we went on a cruise once, and it was a drumming cruise, and mm. we were really? going drumming down cruise? the Glen River, <laughs> oh, okay. and we were drumming. And she, well, That's she's cool. a great sense of rhythm. So now, it do was you very find fun. do you you play the piano as well, right? Yes, and the piano is a percussion instrument, and people don't necessarily know that, right? Well, here's it's, why: inside the hidden. piano. So when I teach, I always the first lesson is always yeah. inside the piano. So you hit a key, and it hits a Hammers. hammer, yeah. and the hammer hits the strings, right? And so that's the second instrument is the strings, which you are yep. going to play the guitar. Yes. And at some point in time, somebody figured out that when you stretch a string across, it makes a tone. And then when you have the tension tighter, it's higher. Oh, we're getting into math now. Yeah. <laughs> no, we said there'd be math. And then but, but all wind instruments like you play yes. yeah, right. are it's all a... replications of the voice. Because your body is really, in when you're a singer... Vibrating also, your vocal, your vocal cords, cords, the and you strings. Have a reed, yes, and right? you are replicating the the voice. Right. So a flute is like a, a women's or a high tenor voice. Whistling. A clarinet is more of an alto. Yeah, the right. saxophone would be a bass instrument. Kind of. And yeah. so we today have all the basics: yeah. a percussion, we percussive. <laughs> we have a string, strings. and we have. I mean, yours are electronic now, yes. but and a basic guitar. You're pr you're depressing the string to get to a tone, and then how yep. many strings you? Yeah, and the, and the tone of the guitar, just like on a piano, the pitch goes up the shorter the string is. Right there's your yes. there's your science lesson. There's your physics yep, lesson. Right. Yes, a lot of strings, exactly. Right? Well, it's so, the same with the saxophone. Yeah, you know, because you're the short. saxophone, what you're doing is you're opening and closing holes, and right. as you're opening the holes, you're 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 lengthening or yep. or shortening the uh, length of the air column. Yeah, right. and, and I played the sousaphone for a number right. of years in the tuba. Okay, right? don't, there we go, the tuba. Very in the marching band. Yeah, I'm always I'm a tuba guy. And yeah, you have to <laughs> have some big muscles. Uh, yeah, or very strong story. shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in Florida, there was a guy walking down the beach in Fort Myers playing the tuba. It was a beautiful sunny day. It was 80 degrees, and he was playing yeah. "Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone." I I had to grab yeah. my phone and record it. I'm like, why is there a tuba in the middle of the yeah. beach playing yep. "Ain't No Sunshine"? He must have been. Lamenting a girlfriend. It could be. <laughs> yeah, or he just loves his horn. Maybe. Well, and then, for one second, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but music is a way to convey emotion yeah, yeah. without words. Yes, that is, I see that too. Yeah, you listen to music or you play it and you do feel something. Absolutely. Right, George? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I mean, you, can, you play multiple instruments. Well, you can, you can you, like Peggy says, you can, you, you can play something very, very sad. Or you can play something very, very happy, yeah. and uh, you can you can change people's emotions just by playing that playing those tunes. Yeah, and you know? the different types of music that we listen to. I mean, we think about these things. A lot of people don't, right? right? And when you have that favorite song you listen to, there's a reason why it's your favorite, right? It hits you in a certain way. Yes. And it, it for I always think it's kind of like in your DNA. It, it, it's it's in you, and you hear a certain song and you. It reverberates with you, like it actually moves your physical self. Yes. Right. And uh, certain songs you hear, you go, "Oh yeah, that that just hits the spot at certain times, like mood and like like you said, you can play sad, you oh, can play right. happy, you can play angry. Absolutely. You know, there's, at, for me, guitar is a stress reliever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think any instrument is. Right. It, for, it really it, is. I, I need sometimes to get you know what it that, does is it gets it, it gets you away from what you're th did, you know what what you're really thinking about every yeah. day and you're you're more focused on the music yeah. and it gets you away from all of the minutia all around you that's true you know and there's times i know we we talked about this last year you all, we've all experienced it where if you're playing yes. you're playing some music and your brain goes in a different spot like yeah, I, I've, I've played some things where it's like I'm not even looking at my hands. You're just listening to things, and things happen. I don't know how to explain it, but things just happen with your hands. Yes. And 
your mind and an hour can go by in a blink. But, and now, but you, now you're talking about improv impro improvisation. Yeah, that's true. But it's and and, that's, so, and that's, yeah. that's really interesting because yes. improvisation is just letting yourself play what you feel. Yes. And jazz musicians are fantastic at doing that. And some of the rock musicians are, are as well because yeah. you're playing, you're not even thinking about the notes that you're playing. You're just playing. Yeah. And really you're bringing your feelings from the inside, outside in a physical manner. Yes. Yeah. And so Im improvisation, that's what I love doing that. Uh, that's what's fun. Uh, my musical background was from fifth grade on through college. I've played. Tuba. So you know what? When we play. Yeah, yeah. We're going to play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. <laughs> and then we're going to improvise. I don't know if I can play that. Yes, you can. <laughs> I don't know if I can play that. Three chords. But, but the thing is, like, <laughs> my, my musical background was always. My wife always says, I'm classic. She's classically trained. She plays the violin. I hope she's watching. She said she was going to watch. Good. <laughs> but uh, she plays the violin. She goes, I'm classically trained. She doesn't feel comfortable doing that improvisation. Right. She likes interpreting the music on the page. And I was of that vein until I discovered the guitar mm -hmm. and started playing and going, this is different. I can explore this on my own. It can be a very personal thing. I don't have to play it for others. And this woman right here talked me into it so I've never played publicly it, I was always afraid to but I've played in front of 110,000 people with my tuba on. Do you want me to tell you why it is? Please. Okay so <laughs> because when I just said this a minute ago the motion your emotions are yeah. in the inside and when you play an instrument they come out on the outside you're really being vulnerable when you play and you uh, you know mess around you're not sure yeah. What everyone else is going to interpret that. Oh, that's true. That. <laughs> yes. I completely agree. You're afraid. Agree. Like, oh, someone's going to. Um, so okay. we're going to continue this in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so the, the discussion, here we are. It, it's the bottom of the hour. <laughs> we're going to stop talking and we're going to give this a go, right? So sure. I'm going to be vulnerable okay. with some very experienced musicians. There's going to be wrong, but that's a th good thing. There's going to be wrong notes. There's going to be right oh, notes. Oh no, but we're no! All not when I'm here. Time. There's no wrong notes. <laughs> there's only well, bad you, choices. You got one. It's, no, no it's wrong hard notes. to it's hard to play a bad note Jimmy, on this. I know. <laughs> Jimmy Romeo okay, taught me this. There's so, no uh, wrong notes. There's only bad. While choices. we transition to the performance stage, uh, let's get on to uh, uh, a video from Fish, so you can see a little bit more what they do in the community here on the 12th annual Owen TV Food Drive. For almost 50 years, <laughs> All right. Dorian Fish has been they serving they gave me the those hook. in need in Oxford, Lake Orion, <laughs> Addison, and Oakland Township. In 2019, Fish experienced record numbers with 187 family visits per month, almost 5,000 individuals served, and over 200,000 pounds of food going out the door. Then in 2020, Fish was rocked by the COVID-19 pandemic. The food pantry was forced to make changes to protect its volunteers and clients, including offering drive-up service. Initially, we had curbside. That was the only way that we were able to take care of everybody. And thank our biggest donor during that was Gleaners because the stores didn't have any products. So without Gleaners, we would have not been able to service this community. And then as of July, we have reopened and we've gone back to normal operations. With COVID protocols in place, we have families that can come every 15 minutes. We limit the people that can come into the pantry at any one time. Everybody has masks on. So we're really following the safety protocols that we, you know, we have in place. But it's just been nice for the clients to be able to come back and shop to get what they need. It was a little difficult for them because we just had prepackaged boxes. It was curbside. And we would let them pick out a few items, but it was really just kind of a volume getting everybody in and out. So now we're really trying to resume normal operations in a safe manner. Since the holidays, the traffic has definitely increased. November was a very full pantry, December. In those two months, we typically do see an uptick in clients because we always have you know, little incentives and little extras for the holidays. But honestly, this month is the first time that we have opened up another shift that's gonna be starting next week because the volume of clients, it's tremendous. Um, I haven't seen this big of a surge since prior to COVID. We're here and we have the product, so we'd like the people to come, but by if they, if they don't need us, we certainly understand that we're happy for them. But our main concern is, you know, making sure, especially with kids, we want to make sure the kids are well taken care of. We don't want any child going to school, being hungry or not having anything. 
Our biggest need right now, I would say, probably is chicken that we're having the most difficulty with. And then just really cash donations are the best thing because we're able to purchase things through the business to business with Meyer and also with Gleaners. So then therefore we're, you know, we can stretch that dollar a lot farther than we can an actual donation. And then as far as food drives, we have not had the postal food drive due to COVID the last couple of years. We did have a wonderful food drive at the holidays from the schools and they, they did a phenomenal job. So that was, that was very helpful. What qualification does a family have to meet to be able to take advantage of these services? Just need. I mean, we don't have any restrictions. Before we always had restrictions for everybody, but now all they have to do is call us and we make it, we make it work. We make it work somehow. They can come in. The ONTV food drive is just such a wonderful gift. It's kind of that blessing after the holidays when everything is low and you kind of come in and step up and then not only that, you really put it out there so that we get that, you know, the notice from the community. And just as a benefit from your on TV, we've then had people that have stepped up with Chris Barnett and, you know, out in Orion and then therefore we have more people that will come in and want to adopt a shelf. So the, the ONTV food drive has really been such a blessing in a multitude of ways. And really the last two years, it's just been overwhelming. Thank you. <laughs> just thank you from, all our, from our heart. Thank everybody that helps us in any way they can. And to people that need it, please call us and please come in. We're here to help. If it's, I don't know, sure it's open. Whoa! All right, all right. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're back in the studio. We've moved to Woodstock. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we're in New York now. Yeah, yesterday we were in uh, Is this orange L.A. Stock? <laughs> yeah, Orange Stock. We have an audience of thousands. So, uh, thousands. <laughs> so here we are. Okay, here's our equipment. We talked. Uh, heartbeat and the voice and all these different things so and the strings and the strings right so so yes i have a guitar here uh six strings right george has his alto saxophone tenor sax tenor sax sorry my mistake and the say the, the name of the drum again djembe the djembe which i think sounds killer it's awesome and uh we also have modern technology up but here. i also brought along oh, my what you bring my trio oh, i brought oh, yeah. along Piano yes. player, yes, a bass did. player, and a drummer. Yes. And it's all electronic. It's done with a product called uh, Band in a Box. It, it's amazing. It's an amazing it software. Is. We have a live drummer today. Yes, we do. Yes, and we I'll do. play over the pretend drummer. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so, so anyway. Yeah, the Band in the Box, and this is modern technology, right? So it allows. It's fantastic. I a, mean, a, a kind of a noob like me to follow along it shows the notes and the key uh, the the changes the chord changes chord we're talking changes, three right. chords yep three the, chords the thing, and a cloud of dust the thing right? that's really <laughs> kind of unique about this software is you can you can just feed it the chord changes and tell it what style you want you can do bluegrass you can yeah. do jazz you can do country you yeah, can do whatever you tell it what tempo you want. Oh, you didn't like the key? You can just change the it's, key it's on the fly. Truly, so for the, truly the, the wow. newbies, Amazing. the tempo is how fast it goes. Right. Whether you're, um, you know, playing a yeah. rock and roll song, which are usually between 140 and 160, it gets your heartbeat going. Oh yeah. yeah. And that's what they do aerobics too, and all kinds of spin classes yeah, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, we just did the aerobics this morning. Get your sweat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I and miss when you want to slow it down and dance with your sweetie pie. Oh yeah. You slow oh, down oh, the yeah. tempo. Yeah. yeah. yeah the, so All anyway, right, we got go. this. We got this tune called uh, an Elvis Presley tune. And really? Yeah, it's an Elvis okay. Presley tune. You want to let's let's give this a shot. All right, son, rock it. Call the hound dog. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. class and that was just a lie never caught a rapping and he ain't no friend of mine now Ian's gonna do a little so 
solo here. Anything. I am not used to playing standing up. That's the home play. Well, there you right? go. I'm so used to sitting down hunched over. I was telling George, yeah. and so you guys are really getting me out of my box, and this is great. So, so for one second, yeah. we're going to talk about what happens when you play with other people. Yes. Oh, so yeah. The, the, um, if, there, if we all had <laughs> heart monitors on, our uh, hearts yeah. would be beating somewhat in similar rhythm. But there's an energy that's created when you're playing with other musicians that doesn't come any other time. No. And it's, uh, you're like playing off of each other. I can hear you, I can hear you. And so my drumming is based on what I'm feeling. Yeah. 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 And, and the listening, the, communi the communication with other musicians. Yes. It's something I experienced before, you know, where you're, you're not saying anything, but you're saying everything in a way. Yes. Right? And so we were all talking. Yes. Exactly. Listening. We have a conversation going musically. Yeah. Yes. And uh, it, the interesting thing is that, like you say, when, when somebody <laughs> does something, somebody else will try to sometimes up, up, do a little yeah, up, up, th and do a little bit better, you know? And it keeps going sometimes, especially in jazz, uh, yeah. you know, you, where you start trading solos. And like in this case, we, we traded 12 bar solos. Right. And when you get doing some jazz, sometimes they decide to trade four bar solos, and then they come oh. down to two bar solos, <laughs> and then they get down to one bar solos. So th that makes it really interesting. You know, interesting. there's a great Disney movie called Soul. Yes. It might be Pixar. It's probably Pixar, I'm sorry. Which talks about all of this yeah. and what happens. I haven't seen that movie. I got to oh, see it. Oh, George, George you got to see it. it. Yeah. it. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, it hits to the fundamentals of a lot of the things that we've been talking about today. Yes. So, oh, we got another tune? Sure, what do you want to hear? Uh, something I can play. Oh. <laughs> okay. How about, uh, there's another blues here. So I, I have to say, um, real quick, the three chord yeah, story yeah. And, a, and a minor. Um, Jimmy Buffett wrote an awesome book called A Pirate Looks at 50. Jimmy Buffett is hysterical and a great businessman. And he figured out in college that his uh, roommate played the guitar and it became a chick magnet. He said, oh, I got to learn how yeah, to that do that. That never happened for me. <laughs> so he learned, and all basic songs start with three chords. Oh, you have the yeah. tonic, which is like the root, the root of the note, chord. Yeah. Then you have a fifth above. Um, it goes like this: the fourth, the fifth. Leonard we, Cohen's yes, Hallelujah. We know that song. Awesome yeah, song. root, the fourth, the fifth, the minor third, the major right, lift. Right. That is the basics of music, and he put that right into Hallelujah. Yeah. So when we get into the degrees of the scale, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. octave. Right. We might be blowing people's minds. That's okay. <laughs> That's we're, all right. we're getting into the minutia of the stuff we like. So do me a favor, play me a C note. Uh, C. All right, now play a G. Oh, I was meant to be above the C, but that's C? okay. I am yeah. showing my experience level. So the sound of music. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That's it. Do is one. Right. Soul is five, and fa is four. There you go. Hey, I know more than I think I do. Yes, you do. All right, what do we? Okay. Key of F. Yeah. Oh, we're skipping this one. Oh no. Okay. Oh, musicians <laughs> hate the key of F. Then they have to play a B flat. No one likes B flat on the guitar. Uh, only on the tuba. <laughs> Love the B flat on the tuba. What are we tuba. playing, George? Well, we got a, 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 another blues tune actually. Okay. All it's right. called Blue Suede Shoes. Oh yeah. You know. Is that that Elvis guy again? Uh, yeah, I think it's Elvis again, right? <laughs> I wore my red suede shoes. <laughs> well, this and I one, just had my work shoes, so. This has got a couple of hits to going in. All right, here we go. Okay. Hold your riches, everybody. Let's go. All right. 
One for the money, two for the show. That's where you get ready now, go, can't go, but don't you step on my blue suede shoes. You can do anything but lay off of them blue suede shoes. You can knock me down, step on my face, slander my name all over the place. I do anything that you want to do. But on my honey, lay off them shoes, but don't you. Step on my blue suede shoes You can do anything but lay off of them blue suede shoes Now we're gonna do a little guitar solo here Ready now, go, can't go, but don't you step on oh, little, 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 I forgot the number where I went through that, but that didn't even know about this. It's called improvising. right oh yeah and, all the time and you guys taught me it's okay so mistakes yes. are okay so anyway we're, we're dealing again with a three chord song something <laughs> yeah. really simple so listen i just want to say as long as the drummer's still on point yeah we you guys can, can do that because you know oh you yes. just wiggle around it well, yeah heard, we've heard that before you said your, your band is only as good as your drummer because right. that heartbeat is gone what yeah, do you no, got? No. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So, did you mess up the words? Is that what happened? Yeah. Oh, oh we had, there was like so an extra. So then you did some scat singing. There was an extra. There was some <laughs> extra yeah. cuts in there, but that's okay. So that's just, so funny. Oh, yeah. You know who started that? Is Louis Armstrong started oh, that? Oh yeah. Yeah. You know when he uh, he he'd forget the words every <laughs> once in a while, so yeah. he'd go. <laughs> you know. See. So you don't have to be tied down so much to the words. Exactly. So you use uh, you use improv yeah, well, in a lot of ways. You use your voice as, uh, like you said, improv, and what happens. And sometimes you might find something new, right? So none of us none of us really have, uh, have uh, you know, memorized a solo. No. So everything is just kind of coming out of your head. Yeah. You know. So when you play the when I play the sax solo or when you play the guitar solo, it's just just happens. It just happens. There is no pre-planned notes or anything like that. That's true. The only fundamentals is I know where my basic chord structure, where my fingers need to be. You got to find. And then once I know where that is, I have my anchor point. Right. And then I can just go. Okay, I know where this doesn't go. I know where this goes. And then, but as far as the structure of it, it's all feel and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You do pretty good on that thing, Ian. Oh. Yeah. A little nervous. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Not what bad. do we got? We got another one? Well, we got, uh, let's see what we got here. Let's do a little slow down one. Ooh. Slow one. Yeah. All right. Uh, a little slower. Let's see. How about at last? Oh, that that's one? a great tune. Do you sing that? Uh, well, yes, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I'll sing, the, I'll sing the first line with you. How's that? Yes. And that's, that's another thing talking about, like, being able to sing and play at the same time. You know how we were talking both hey, halves I of our brain? Hey, I play the pipe organ. You're playing, you've got your feet going, and you're singing at the yeah. same time. But you know we have, oh yeah, see that, and like drummers singing and playing all that right. at the same time is just, yeah. I cannot comprehend that. So you know what? It is an acquired thing. And um, I mean, honestly, hockey players are amazing. 
They have to ice skate frontwards, oh, backwards, yeah. play with the puck, and make sure not killing yeah, somebody's not <laughs> killing them into the boards. I mean, it's kind of the same. Yeah, yeah. All right, here's uh, here's a, we're going to do this rather slow tempo, but this is uh, the one uh, one six to two five uh, changes. All righty. See if I can keep up. Bye. 
I got to tune so up. Carol. Now there, we went from three to four chords. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that was that was At, until we got to the bridge. Then that it was a bit a tough. Bit. But hey, what do you think, guys? Did uh, Ian do pretty good on that for uh, playing this being, tune before? I, I survived. Would say, I I'd survived. say he did very well. The good thing though is like. I get kind of in a rut, right? You play things that you know and you're comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, like, I love 60s rock and roll. So I showed George some stuff that I was playing, yeah. you know, what I like to do. This is getting me out and trying something else. It makes me a better player and, and shows me what I need to practice. So here's the thing. <laughs> An octave is eight keys, right? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, start over. Yeah. That's how we teach piano. It's the crayons in the box, eight of them. And then, when you get a little older, you get to go to 16 colors. Yeah. So, and then, you get 64, and then the big box is all the colors. Yeah. <laughs> so there's still 132 in a box of crates. Yeah, so, I, we're really coloring. Yeah. And if you listen between um, the notes, I mean, play two notes. Play a C and an E. Oh, I got the tuner. All right, turn your, yes, sir. All right, now, go between C and E and, you know, use all the colors. There we go. And you were doing some sliding. Yeah. You can improvise on two or three notes. There you go. It's all the colors in between. You do it all the time, George. Well, the, the thing that makes, uh, the, you know, I could just say, I could just play. Which is the has melody no of at last. Feeling. It has no feeling, right? Nope. So if I go. <laughs> yeah, making it growl. Now yeah. you got a little feeling to it, right? Right. Yeah. And if you're playing rock and roll, you might want to go. Yeah, yeah. I always wonder how you got that. Is you that growl. growl in your you throat? Growl. Right? That you is growl. amazing. Yeah, and it comes out through the instrument. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so, Ian, I can say, hi, Ian. Hi, Ian. <laughs> See, it's all in the way yeah. that you put the, the air through the yep. instrument, or in your case, how you string. And on the string instrument. You're uh, bending uh, the notes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you can bend notes. That is difficult. I don't know. That is just blows my mind. But yeah, yeah. You know, so. Right. You know, little things like that, uh, it's subtle. You know, that, that's what makes the solo you know, interesting. Popping it um, instead of just, you know, yeah, that sort of stuff. So, yeah. so but, how are you? How do you bend notes on? I that know song? you I, do it all the time. You do it right here with your lip. Yeah, Is that really? it's just the pressure on your lip. That's all. You just yeah. push on the reed slightly yeah, you, you harder. Just, you, you let you let down on it. Uh, reed instruments just blow my mind. There you go. Oh. There you go. It, it gives you, you appreciation. Use half, you can use uh, half fingerings to, to, to help you. The, the appreciation you know. of listening to the real masters play these things, you understand how difficult it can be. But also, I'm not a master, but we're still having fun doing it. Yeah. Right? That's right. the whole point. And uh, making music is fun. Yes. And I'm having a good time. It's always helpful to have encouraging friends around to play some tunes. You can do it by yourself. And the internet, right? YouTube. The, yeah. the lessons that are on there are insane. Before yes. I was guessing, for me, I started playing in about 1987. And just kind of like, what is all this? Right? You had no yeah, clue. Yeah, right. And 30, 40 some odd years later, it finally kind of clicks a little bit. There's so much stuff on the internet, it's unbelievable. Because last night, I was just you know getting ready to go to bed, and I came upon this thing. I do quite a bit of arranging. For, for big bands oh, and yeah. Dixieland band. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I came across this site, it was an arranging site, and he was telling you how to score trumpets, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was really kind of interesting. So you, th there's so much there's stuff so out much there. Stuff. So that's a fascinating thing. So on a pipe organ, yeah. you have all the different, somebody just asked me the other day, can you, you show me all this? Well, you got strings, you got horns, you have um, f uh, woodwinds. Right. And once in a while, you have a trumpet, which is a mm -hmm. brass instrument. Yep. But when you play, like somebody, instead of hiring a trumpet player, they want the trumpet stop on the organ. You have to think like a trumpet player. So yep. you don't play like a piano. Yeah. You have to uh, attack uh. it. So you go yeah. boing, boing, because that's what a trumpet player right. does. Right. The attack on yeah. the embouchure 
is what makes the trumpet. Exactly. You can have a draggy trumpet and it sounds terrible, but you guys that follow bright along at sign. home. You getting this? Yeah. You're taking notes. Yeah. You go score your next uh, it's the picnic. It's the crayons in the box. <laughs> it is. The crayons I love, in the box. I, love yeah, that. I like that. I love that analogy. I like the crayons in the box routine. So yeah, that's yeah. Good. some people when they hear music, they see colors, right? Yes, you know, they do. Um, yes. A friend of mine, he had perfect pitch at the School of Music at MSU, and mm -hmm. you go, do you just know it or do you see colors? He goes, oh, I see a rainbow of colors. No matter what, you hear a chord, I see all yeah. the colors, and it's amazing. My daughter has perfect pitch, Does and she, she really? sings beautiful, and she will not sing in front of other people because she doesn't want to, uh, you know, well, expose herself to if other you, people. If you got me up here, <laughs> keep pushing, because <laughs> th I now, would never even consider it. She but. sang the national anthem in, in uh, kindergarten. Really? Oh, yes, and her pitch is perfect. Right. That's yeah. amazing. But people do have perfect pitch. It's a, a, a gift and talent. You can't make it happen. You can't make it happen. No. I got a good friend, a, a young lady, as a matter of fact. She's about 25 years old, and she has perfect pitch. So that, for, for people you who know, don't know, perfect pitch means if I say, hey, play a C, someone will sing that note and have it right on. Without even thinking. Or you play it, and they can yeah. tell you what note you're playing. Or right. Margaret would sing a song that she heard on the radio, and she sings it in exactly the same key that the singer sings yeah. it in. She right. doesn't change your pitch. My friend, if you hit the, we, I hit an out of tune keyboard. Oh yeah. You know, like an old piano and He's he goes, like, Ooh. yeah, that one's a half a whatever. Uh, yeah, like right. what? You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sounds yeah. good to me. We're so playing. Ian, I hate to tell you this, but what? you know, I hear when your pitch is a little off. I just don't want to say that. No, it is. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> that G string trying to keep that baby in tune under the lights is, is right. driving me crazy. So, you know what? Tell everybody how you change the pitch on a string. Okay. With so it's just like we were talking, when you shorten a string or lengthen a string, the shorter it is, the higher pitch, the longer it is, the lower the pitch. Right. So we have these little machines here on the uh, tip of the guitar, they're called tuning, tuning pins. machines or tuning, tuning pegs, pins. right? Mm -hmm. And so what we do is I have a little electronic device here that tells me when I'm in tune, and uh, I just strum my string and I can turn... Uh, clockwise and it makes the string longer and the pitch goes down or, or I turn it the, uh, counterclockwise and it gets uh, shorter and the pitch goes up. Yes. So I can uh, raise or lower the pitch to make sure it's in tune and I have each string has a different note assigned to it. Uh, it's not written in stone. We know that alternate tunings on guitars and different things can be magical things. That's right. Yeah, right. Uh, but I'm doing the standard tuning and trying to survive. So you're doing but awesome it's, job. It's, it's working out good. I'm having a good time. That's the whole point. So it is what one o'clock. So at the top of the hour, we're gonna do a little bit of bit food drive business. Okay. So uh, we are here in the studio playing with my friends. Uh, Peggy and George and uh, making a little racket here at the ONTV studios live on Wednesday, the uh, third day of the food drive. We have two more days uh, coming up uh, for the food drive. Thursday is a do-it-yourself day. Friday is Lake Orion history. So uh, we're going to have people in the studio to have discussions about Lake Orion's history, a rich history. And uh, so today it is performance in music. So we're talking music and playing some tunes and having a good time. But we have to thank our sponsors for the food drive this year. Our 16 sponsors I was notified at the top of the hour. Um, so before uh, we start playing again and talking music again, let's uh, thank our uh, sponsors once again for all of their generous donations to the food drive with this video. All of us at Owen TV would like to thank our corporate sponsors for their generous donations. We are so thankful for their participation this year. Meyer is a five-day sponsor with a $900 donation. Our neighbor just down the road, Old World Canterbury Village, donated $1,000 and is also a five-day sponsor. The North Oakland Democratic Club joined the food drive for the first time as a one-day sponsor this year. M3 Investments donated $500 toward our final goal and is a five-day sponsor. Kroger is helping us out again this year as a three-day sponsor and Northern Wholesale Flooring is joining us as a two-day sponsor. And Tracy Woodrum with Dolby Real Estate is a first-time sponsor with the Food Drive. Thank you again to all of our sponsors. Now we would like to take the time to show you videos featuring two of our sponsors, the North Oakland Democratic Club and Tracy Woodrum with Dolby Real Estate. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Eileen Knowlton and I'm the chair of the North Oakland Democratic Club. We are so proud to be one of the many sponsors of the ONTV Food Drive benefiting Oxford Orient Fish. 
The North Oakland Democratic Club has been around for several decades and is chartered by the Michigan Democratic Party, serving Addison, Brandon, Groveland, Holly, Independence, Orion, Oxford, Rose, Springfield Townships, and Clarkston. Our mission has always been to support Democratic Party candidates and progressive causes, including environmental causes, social justice, diversity, equity, and inclusion, gun safety, voting rights, investment in our education and infrastructure, and civil and gender rights. Although we are a minority in North Oakland, our membership is growing steadily, and we're always welcoming new members. Dues are optional, and we only ask that you have an open mind and an open heart. With so much divisiveness and vitriol in our current political climate, we want to encourage civil discourse. We want people to know that we exist in our community and that we have a voice in our community. The club is a great way to make connections and lasting friendships. Our community outreach endeavors include supporting Oxford Orient Fish Food Pantry, Gleaners, Grace Centers of Hope, Lighthouse Haven, the Oxford Survivors Fund, just to name a few. We participate in activities like Taste of Clarkston, the Leonard Strawberry Festival, the Ortonville September Fest, and we also support our North Oakland Headwaters Land Conservancy. During these COVID days, we also adopted local restaurants and encouraged our members to support them and all local businesses. We meet the third Wednesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom for now, but once we're able to gather safely, we'll return to meeting at local restaurants in our club area. We invite you to join us for our upcoming meeting on February 16th at 6.30. For more information, you can always check out our website at www.nodcmi.com or check out our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages. We look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you so much. I am a local realtor um, and an associate broker with Dewey Real Estate. Um, I'm here in Lake Orion and I do a lot of work in Northern Oakland County. Um, so I wanted to give back to our community. I like to volunteer and um, do what I can to help sponsor the organizations that help our community. What's your history in the Lake Orion community? Uh, my history is I've been in Lake Orion for about, oh gosh, 15 years now, about 15 years. Um, I actually have worked for the DDA, the Downtown Development Authority. I was a market manager for the Lake Orion Farmers Market. Well, our market is Michigan made, Michigan grown. All of the vendors here, they make their product for such as the farm, they work on the farm where they grow those products. I have had I had three kids and two have gone all the way through Lake Orion schools and graduated. One is a freshman in high school, so I've volunteered with the schools and, and done a lot that way as well. Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Today, how did you get involved uh, with the ON TV food drive? How, how did you decide to become a sponsor this year? I got involved because I am a volunteer here at ONTV. Um, I actually do my um, Tea with Tracy videos. My I do Instagram Live every Tuesday at 12, and I started doing um, recording them here in the ONTV podcast studio. And so being here once a week, I hear about you know what ONTV is involved in, and I wanted to participate and help. Now your podcast, initially I would imagine your goal was to talk about real estate issues. But it's become a lot more than that. You put a spotlight on local businesses. In a way, that's giving back to the community. Yeah, I, I love being able to do that. Um, again, our community, everybody helps each other out and we all come together. So I love that I get to bring on different local business owners and spotlight their businesses. Um, I've had so many people tell me after the fact, I didn't even know that existed. I did a community services um, series as well. And, you know, there are surprisingly people who don't know what is available out there. So it's, it's a lot of fun to do that. Um, and then just finally, why do you think it's important that, that to give back to the community? 
I think it's very important to give back. We're all in this together. I mean, nobody can really go through life alone. Um, and as I mentioned, life goes in cycles. We all have times where we're, we're doing better and then times where maybe we're struggling a little bit. So helping each other out through those tough times um, is important. You want to give out any contact information and maybe plug where people can see your podcast? Sure, you can find my podcast on all of the ONTV channels, <laughs> but also on Instagram, on Realtor Tracy24, on Facebook, Tracy Woodrum Realtor. And um, yeah, I would love it if you would check out Tea with Tracy. I go live on Instagram every Tuesday at 12. And if there's anything anybody would love to hear about or a business you would love to see spotlighted, please let me know. I'd love to have, I was, I'm always looking for new guests. All right, back in the studio, we want to thank our sponsors. Without them, our collection totals would be nowhere near what we need for fish. Our collection goal this week was $5,000, and we've blown past that uh, by a country mile. Tessa, do we have, uh, uh, our director Tessa, do we have our totals so far, just to give everybody at home a, an idea of what we're looking at? Um, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? $5,535 still. So get those donations in. You head over to OrionOnTV.org and click on the Food Drive logo. It'll take you to our GoFundMe account. The GoFundMe account is active until Friday at the close of business. And all the proceeds go to Oxford Orion Fish Food Pantry. Um, yes, and you, if you want to, you can donate uh, right here at the ONTV Studios at 1349 Joslin Road at the Orion Center. And the staff will be more than happy to take your physical donations, your non-perishable items, or uh, your cash donation. And uh, every bit helps uh, fish stock those shells. And uh, the cash donations really gives them flexibility throughout the year to make sure that if uh, the items they need are available, they can get them. If they're not available, they can hold on to that money and really use it the way they need to. So we are here in the studio on Performance Day. Uh, goofing around, making some yeah. noise, and having a good time uh, with my buddies uh, uh, Pe uh, Peggy. Peggy Barry Bart and George Sinnott. I think I need a glass of water. Uh, I've been talking a while, but we're going to play a tune. Let's dig in. What do we have here? Well, you know, when we were, t we were on the break, uh, listening to the video, we kind of said, broke into a why tune. don't we uh, <laughs> check out a couple of tunes? Yeah. And Peggy said, hey, I, I'd like to... Maybe, I can sing that one. I can sing that one. So... <laughs> We're going to do a, I a, cannot, a so tune that I will sit uh, back we have never ever played no. together before. No. It's called Hello Dolly. And I've never so, played this So let's see life. how it goes. I'm going to crank up my uh, bass and drums here. Okay. Whoop. Let me get back to the <laughs> beginning. So it's here we go. kind of exciting, you know? Okay. Featuring Peggy. And all of you. Hello. close to the mic. You're looking swell, darling. We can tell, darling. You're still glowing, you're still crowing, you're still going strong. We feel the room sway. 
said about root notes we took the uh <laughs> i broke that down we as kind basic of, as possible we also surprised uh peggy on the end there we put a little uh yes, tag, did. tag, a on, little the tag end. on it yeah. so i got to see the musical hello dolly Ooh. did you really at the fisher somebody had an extra ticket what an awesome show really yeah cool. i got to see music man on my honeymoon in new york city oh. how about that i'll, up, I'll one up you oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i was in music man Oh. Ooh. In third grade. Wow. And I was one you? of the kids running around. <laughs> Very fun. That's great. Yep. I had no idea what was going on. I just said, band students, oh, it was fifth grade. Band students, come on, go up here, and you had to play bad. Yeah. Right. You know, right. Oh, like, yeah, right. Blah, 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 blah. And right. then at the end, you had to play well. Right? Yeah. So, yep. And my were, one and only time on stage. And you were, <laughs> were you were actually playing an instrument? Yeah. My, I play, started on the cornet. Fantastic. The trumpet. So that's what I started playing on back in the fifth grade. Way so long ago. we're going to do a shout out to all the band students. Yes. I was a band student in high school. I had an amazing director in, in all of the grades. Wow. Uh, Mr. Schultz and uh, um, uh, Seymour Oaken. He was amazing. He probably should have been a college professor, but he yeah. worked with us. And that's how I met Dr. Leonard Falcone oh. and Dr. Rivelli, oh, yeah. because he would bring them in to direct us high school brats. You know, you and talk about experiences in music. You mentioned the name Falcone. Yes. Um, Falcone, and you know him too. You know him as well. Yes. But Blue Lake did a trip to Italy to play in Falcone's hometown. And we actually did a concert <laughs> at midnight so that it would be broadcast live here at Blue Lake oh. from Italy, from wow. this little tiny town in Italy where he was born. Yes. They were dedicating a new plaza and this is how you get to meet a lot of people using music. Yes. You know, uh, I've taken, I think, eight or nine trips to Europe with a group out of uh, Blue Lake, yeah. Michigan. And if you don't know what Blue Lake is, Blue Lake is a uh, band camp, mostly known for, 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 you know, teaching kids music. Yeah. Uh, however, they do have an adult band camp oh, in the do? summer. Oh, they I do? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't oh, know that see? either. There's something you didn't know. My, uh, okay. Well, I have Blue met Lake. so many friends through Blue Lake it's unbelievable. We've yeah. like I say, we we take a band of about forty people to Europe every. Uh, it used to be every two years, and now it's kind of you know since COVID, nothing's happening. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what a great experience! Yeah. We had a chance to play in front of uh, some huge crowds, uh, and like I say, we broadcast live from uh, Italy back to Blue Lake, and. Uh, See that. That is so cool, and to parallel that too, my wife, I mentioned she plays the violin, right? and she played it in the MSU Symphony as a non-music major, mm -hmm. so she was pretty darn good. Yes. And she was at Blue Lake and did the traveling the Europe, the, yeah. this, the orchestra that traveled around Europe when right. she was in high school, and uh, she talks about it to this day that it changed her life. It was fantastic oh, yeah. and the experiences she had. So, you know, there's, there's avenues for people to, and now all ages, I don't even know they had an adult uh, band yeah. camp thing I there. I did not know My that My daughter either. went as a bass clarinetist. She went a couple years, I think, two years. She loved it. And then we also have up in Upper Michigan, not oh, Upper yeah. Michigan, in the Thumb, um, not the uh, Interlock. Thumb. Interlock, which is yeah. an international music academy. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the thing that's interesting about music, because, you know, in my lifetime, I've moved, I think, probably at least 10 or 12 times. In every place I move, 
I get involved in a music program, either a community band, a jazz band, a church yeah. group, or something like that. And you know, the thing that's good about it is you, you become instant friends with these people. Yes. So we moved, for example, we, we, moved to this, uh, we moved to Akron, Ohio. And I started in a church group playing bass. And uh, we had several pretty good singers in that group, and we had a couple of guitar players that were good. We started this little rock group called Just Friends. Oh. And, and, and we, we had a great time playing around the, the community, playing all kinds of events. And so, it, but you were, you were talking about before high school experiences. You know, in the high school I went to was a small school in, Berlin, in, uh, in Vermont. We had a total of eight students in my graduating class. <laughs> George. And wow. the only so music, you kind of knew each other. The only music program that we had <laughs> was a vocal teacher who w didn't know anything about instrumental. So um, a friend of mine had this saxophone up in his attic. He had never played. So I bought this saxophone for $35, and I learned how to play it. My mother gave my, I had, I had to get, take piano lessons when I was in the first and second grade or my mother would have killed me. Good. So it was Motivation 15, min in different 15 ways, minutes right? a day. So after two years, I quit that. You know, that, that couldn't, I couldn't keep doing that and still play sports. So then I got to high school and his friend had a saxophone. I said, well, let me borrow your saxophone. So I took it and I started, I got a book and I started, I knew the, t the notes because I had taken piano lessons. Yeah, yeah. And within a couple of weeks, I was playing the saxophone. And uh, there was nobody around to play. So the next door neighbors, uh, daughter played the piano. So we started a group, she played piano, and I put my brother on the drums. <laughs> and we had a trio. <laughs> and we started That's playing great. high school dances, you know, back in the 1950s. And uh, we were very popular. We, we played, uh, you know, proms all around the area. And, but what a great experience. Yeah, yeah. And, but you, you discovered it early, and you still have it to this day. I mean, you're still, music is important to you, George, I'd it's, say. Yeah. Right? I yeah, mean, right now it is, yeah. It is. Because yeah. I'm retired now and all I do is music. Well, well I do a few other things too. Musicians like never retire. We just play and play and play. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And, and, and Peggy, you're talking about your high school music teacher. But I started earlier. playing long before high school. Hmm. Three of my sisters took piano lessons. Mm -hmm. My mom realized that I had a talent for it. And so one day she said, hey, there's no one up there playing the organ. I was 11 years wow. old. Wow. I was, you know, uh -huh. shorter. And uh, she said, go play that. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so amazingly, sit there and bang out with my, my younger sister was tone deaf, and I had to sit next to her. Oh, so boy. it was really an escape, oh. except that Sister Rafina was tone deaf also, and she sang wow. in my ear. So anyway, that is how my career started. Th I played from 11 to 19 at this little tiny see, church in I Lincoln was Clemens. the traditional, you go to school, um, I didn't have piano lessons. It was, oh, I have to take band or choir. I go, I'm not singing. I'm right? not getting up there and singing. <laughs> no way. I'm not doing that. And so it was like band, and it was one or the other. And choir is usually small, and the fifth grade band had like 150 kids in it. Right. Because right? so everybody had to pick one or the other, yes. which I'm grateful that my school district, I grew up in Dexter, and it was a small farming community back then, and they had the music program there that you said, you will do this or that, and you will at least get exposed to it. Because right. that's not the case uh, nowadays in some instances with you know, the arts being cut and, and the schools and They still all things. teach the um, recorder. The recorder. So you right. have some basic, and most music people can figure out when you have some talent for it yeah. uh, musically. Yeah. Um, but and to have that in the schools, it was, it was, I wouldn't be doing this if right. I didn't have that exposure. Right. I, I may have found it some way, just out of, I really like music. And, and so I'm going to give a musical commercial. But, yeah. Music, when you learn music, it uses both sides of your brain. You have the math and, and science, you have the yep. left brain right. side, and then you have the creative right brain. Yep. So um, it is an excellent, all of my, um, in high school there was 550 of us, and the top 20 kids were where at least half of them were in band. Yeah. Because it's just really helpful. And, then and there's all kinds of literature out there. It, it's so funny you say that because my graduating class was maybe 135, 136. And I think top 10, 15, uh, even in the 20s were all band members. All band I mean, people. There were more people on the marching band or in band than on the football team or on yeah. these, you know, these things. So 
we had huge bands back then because it was something to do. You're in the country. Here we right. go. Let's play some right. music. Right. And even with the three of us, we talked about the energy this created. When you're with a band and there's 150 of you, oh, it's and you're making music and those drums are going, it's oh, going it's right fun. through your body. Yeah. It's oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. You don't ever forget that. Right. So um, Tessa, maybe help me out here. It is, I think, 25 after 23. Uh, we have an interview coming up with a good friend of Owen TV from the township, uh, Dave Rafter. He's supposed to be zooming in. Um, any news from Dave? He's in the waiting room. He's in the okay, if he's ready, um, maybe uh, I don't uh, want to do one more tune. You think we can get one sure. more song in? Maybe you guys. I'll go do back a, to the drum. Maybe you guys. George takes the solo this time, so yeah. I can set up for the interview. You I'll put my it. guitar down, and uh, we'll do that. So, um, George, take it away. This discussion has been a lot of fun, and. You were kind of remember your your music teachers, right? So oh, I, yes. I say Martha Sharpsburg was uh, mine, and uh, Gerald Woolfolk were my two music instructors uh, all through my life, basically. Yes. So yeah. All right. Thank you to them for making me allowed to <laughs> to make a noise like yes. this. Yes. All right. We're gonna leave it up to George and uh, Peggy. Right. They're gonna they're gonna rock out a little bit. We're gonna, then, we're gonna uh, do I'll a little uh, Kansas City. Come on, Ian. I'm going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Yes, I'm going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. <laughs> they got some crazy little women there. And I'm going to get me one, or maybe two or three, I don't know. I'm going to stand on the corner. train I might take the plane but if I have to walk I'm going to get there just the same I'm going to Kansas City Kansas City here I come they got some crazy little women there I'm going to get me one But if I have to walk, I'm going to get there just the same. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. They got some crazy little women there. I'm going to get me one. good those are fun I love those. that was awesome you guys Ooh, let me run over here how we doing he in the waiting room still setting up okay I'm a little ahead sit down he's telling me to do something okay while we're waiting for uh, Dave to pop in maybe I could do some housekeeping should we do some housekeeping anybody Bueller <laughs> Want to take uh, anybody on uh, camera three? We're getting the focus. Okay. 
Hang in live, there, folks. Live, we'll be right with you. live TV. <laughs> But, now pause hey, but that's this. that's improvisation too, right? Let's I mean, pause for the cause. <laughs> yeah, pause for the cause. Let's let's contemplate the universe. So anyway, th thank you uh, to the staff, the crew, all the guys, Steve, uh, Jim, Tessa, my director, for for putting up with my antics today. Peggy, George, you guys having a good time. So uh, while we're setting up the interview, uh, we at least try to bring somebody in from the township or around the area to to have a little chat. Uh, share some information about what's happening, and today we're going to have Dave Raftery in the studio. Uh, he's a great guy. We work together quite a bit on technical things around the di uh, district. I used to work in a school district a long time ago, but around the township and here at Owen TV. So we're going to have him. He's going to tell us some cool stuff about what's happening, activities, the new building, the new township uh, hall down the road. Um, but uh, if we're ready, uh, Dave, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. <coughs> How are you, sir? I see you're uh, in. Are you in the? Where, where are you, actually? You tell me. I was saving that for the end, but okay, don't I can tell, tell me. you right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you. I am in the brand new Dragon Community Room at uh, New Township Hall. It's. Uh, I've got some photographs behind me. Um, I've got a big window over here. I tried to get the window in the shot. But it just whited <laughs> me out, so I, I didn't do that. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, the iris is not your friend on a big window. <laughs> well, uh, and of uh, course, we, we actually put uh, in, have some of the cameras in that room piped into our control room. So yeah, so we have the uh, the, the room. We yep, there you are. Wave. Uh, where you're facing? There you go. Uh, on the out back. Well, there you go. Right there. There he is. <laughs> So that is the new community uh, room down at uh, Township Hall. It is a fabulous uh, venue. It's a great room. There's uh, community events can be held there, uh, among other things, right? It gives you more space. We're looking to elections coming up this year, right? So there's space for that and the sorting of the ballots and the counting and all that good stuff. So tell us what other events and things that are happening in that space or share us uh, some info about the new Township Hall. So you're right, um, <clears throat> uh, the Township Board just voted to make this um, a precinct location. Um, it's going to be a an emergency location in case we needed to add another one or if we needed to move out of somewhere at the last minute, uh, this room would be available for that. <clears throat> the um, absentee counting is going to happen here at Township Hall as well. Um, it's going to happen in the in the boardroom. Um, but uh, outside of those days, this room is available for you to rent. If you want to come and have a baby shower or a board meeting, we've had several of them um, in this room already. We've had people come and use this, this room on the weekend. There's a small kitchenette, there's a refrigerator, a microwave, a sink. Uh, there's all the technology in the room for music or to play videos or to show a presentation all available right here and you can check out those rates at the parks website which is orionparks.com awesome the uh <laughs> the new building everybody in town knows about the old place <laughs> everybody. uh they they're probably not as uh, intimately uh knowledgeable like we are about that old place um tell us why we were looking for a new township hall I mean, you and I know the answers, but those watching may not know. <laughs> it's true. Um, so the Old Township Hall uh, was built many years ago. Um, I wish I had these numbers to hand, but I don't. No, no that's um, okay. We know it well, we, we'll just say it, it served its purpose and it was dying. I mean, <laughs> right? It's the end yes, of its life. Absolutely. Uh, I the mean, flooding. the flooding. The, the thing that Chris points out all the time is um, our sheriff's office. It's uh, we ran out of space for them a long time ago. And for a couple of years, like probably three years, we were working with um, lockers physically in a shower um, because we needed lockers, obviously, for our deputies to keep their belongings in. And, and it, it tied up one of the showers that we just we just straight up did not have the space for them to be in the building. And um, but that's just one. It's we had some uh, offsite storage. Um, you know, our records rooms were 
full to the top. Um, obviously, uh, as you as you spoke about, we had water. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we water. laugh about it, but I remember standing in a puddle in our control room, our television control room down in the lower level going, uh, do I need rubber boots and insulators or I'm going to get a shock here? I mean, it was pretty, <laughs> is in rough yeah. shape, but now the new building, it looks fantastic. Um, I've been through it. It's so open. Um, like you yep. mentioned, the... Uh, you know, the <clears throat> space for staff and storage is just really uh, uh, a really modern, not over the top. It's really cool. It's a really nice building. We went with the, uh, the open concept uh, for the staff. It's kind of divided by wings. And the advantage is that if somebody comes to a particular wing and uh, has a question for a department that they're not in, the employee and the person can both walk the whole way down to whatever department, you know, they can fill in and explain, you know, this is Ian and he wants to know about putting up a fence, you know, yeah. and, and rather than having to send somebody down the hall or try and find where they need to go. <laughs> and that actually worked out great. Uh, was it this week? I think it was. I had to pay my water bill. I saw you and another colleague of yours. I'm like, who do I pay the water bill to? And it was so wide open. I was able to find it really quickly and have my business taken care of. So, yeah, it, I really like it. It's so nice and open um, and very welcoming. So uh, you do more than just talk about Township Hall. Share us with some of the things that are happening, happening around Township uh, events, activities, all the good stuff that uh, <laughs> that you have your 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 fingers on and uh, interested in. Yep, uh, change my hats real quick and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on at Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I've been talking for a couple hours. I need some refreshment. Parks and Rec. Um, all right, so uh, we've got a couple of really great and exciting dates coming up uh, with Parks and Recreation. Uh, the long-awaited uh, walk-in registration. We're doing OOSL, LOIBL, and OGSL. Wow. All this Saturday from 10 until 2 um, at the Orient Center. Uh, so you'll be able to do uh, your registrations for all of the youth sports this Saturday. Um, so that's the big one. Yeah, and of course, big we, one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we have the uh, snowcation that we started last year. Uh, we did that again this year, and there is a couple of events coming up. Uh, we have pictured this scavenger hunt. Um, it's currently going, um, and it will be uh, finishing up on Monday. Um, there is 12 locations. Uh, you got to find out where they are. You go, you take a selfie. You post it to the event page on Facebook, and then you can pick up your goodie bag um, at the Orient Center, uh, right there at Parks and Recreation. Uh, to get you started, if you take a look at the Snowcation website, uh, orientsnowcation.com, um, that'll get you started. And that's a really cool event because it's really ingenious because it gets everybody out and to sample the different venues. There's so many different parks and venues uh, that, uh, you know, residents know, like their favorites, the big parks, right? Friendship and Civic Center. Uh, but you have Agawam, you've got all these other little, and then the little pocket parks that are around town now that we have. It's, it really is a cool event uh, to get people out and about to just sample these different spaces. And don't forget about Wildwood. It's, there are so many people in the township that don't even know that we have an amphitheater right here. Um, we have concert series. We have both uh, you know, our, our concert series that are hosted by the Parks Department and also ticketed events. It, it's a, it's a, a really great hidden gem. It is. And uh, Shakespeare in the Park, too. You know, the, the high school actors are out there, the club, and yes. it, it's really yeah, great. Yeah. And it, you know and we know that it's been growing and word is getting out uh, that that's there, but uh, it's, it's pretty... Uh, topical to talk about the amphitheater since we are in performance day here on the food drive here in the studio we're playing and George Sinnott our uh, our uh, resident sax player today and um, he helped work to get that uh, you know off the ground and get a shovel in the ground to get that amphitheater built so it's really kind of coming into its own and developing and really working and it, it is an awesome venue 
And uh, yeah, we have a good time going there, filming the concerts and sharing those with the community. Uh, do you have any other items that you'd like to share before we sign off for today? Sure, I'll just do a, a couple of really quick ones. Um, <clears throat> we do have a Valentine's Day lunch coming up on February 14th. That's going to be for the 50 and older group. Uh, there's soup salad and line dancing, oh. uh, which is going to be uh, really interesting to see. <laughs> the deadline for registration for that is on Friday, um, and you can register in person um, down at the Orion Center, or you can also register online at orionparks.org. Um, and then the big one, we got Car Bingo with yours truly. <laughs> We're going to be... <laughs> We're going to be calling it, myself and Jenny, who's not here today. Um, we're going to be calling Car Bingo February 22nd at 1 p.m. And that's sponsored by Big Boy. Uh, we ask you to register for that just so we make sure we have enough bingo cards printed. Uh, but yep, you show up at the Orient Center and we play bingo. Car Bingo is huge. I mean, the turnout for that when the weather's nice. We're, when we first heard about Car Bingo, we're like, yeah, I've heard about Car Bingo. And you're like, yeah, okay, you know, maybe it'll be big. I pull in to park for work, and I'm like, there's no place to park. I mean, the place <laughs> is jammed, and they're ready to go. And, you know, there's so many different ways to have fun and experience your neighbors and mingle and meet people and just enjoy, uh, you know, the surroundings here in Orion Township. And, Dave, you're a big part of it. Uh, I know Jenny's not there, but you two together are great on your Facebook live feeds. If you if you haven't seen it, you got to tune in because just for the entertainment value alone, not only the information, <laughs> but you guys are, you should have your own series. And I think we've employed you guys before for the food drive. So I know you're running solo uh, this year, but I appreciate you taking the time, Dave. You know, you're, he's a good friend of Owen TV and everything we do here at the food drive. And um uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day to sit in with us at the food drive, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. Absolutely. All right, Dave Raftery from uh, Orion Township, great guy. Uh, he is busy. That guy is everywhere, and um, it's the behind the scenes stuff. You know, the the, the staff uh, in the Orient in Orion Township that are doing all these different things. The the Parks and Rec Department, uh, Dave, and the technology technology department and having uh, the supervisor's office, all that stuff, uh, all the things they do, always for the benefit of the residents here in Lake Orion. And they're a huge supporter of the food drive. Um, so we thank them again. I want to thank uh, Penny Schultz, our township clerk. She's collecting uh, physical donations on our behalf for the food drive. Again, our goal was $5,000 cash, but we have blown by that figure for sure. Uh, over $5,500 I think we've collected. Uh, so far, and the physical donations are coming. We're going to make a run over to Lake Orion High School and uh, grab some of the donations from the high school students uh, today. So we'll give you an update on that for our 12 to 2 p.m. slot on Thursday, which is tomorrow. I can't believe it's already halfway. So we're going to get back to the tunes. Um, let's send it over to George and Peggy. You guys got something lined up, or absolutely? Okay, he always has something lined up, and I'll I'll just join you here in just uh, two seconds. So let's toss it over to George. What do you got? We got uh, a tune that we just, uh, t while you were talking, we, we decided we would uh, do a tune without you. <laughs> Fine How's by that? me. I'm okay. That's great. <laughs> so anyway, it's a Louis Armstrong tune that was done. It's a tune called uh, Wonderful World, and we're going to feature Peggy on this one. Okay, so just before we sing this, George, I just want to say, this is song is very special to me. Um, I have used it in many applications. Uh, my daughter, my middle daughter in kindergarten, uh, their graduation ceremony, they used this song. Whoa. And every child did a drawing of each of the parts of the song. Really? And so my daughter ended up with the last line, What a Wonderful World. And I still have that poster. Fantastic. At home. So, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, but it is a wonderful world. It's a perfect song. All right. Let's yeah. give it a shot, see what okay. happens. Okay. You got it.
the colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also on the faces of people going by i see friends guitar player in his oh i don't know about that <laughs> do you now let's see what yeah we need do? you back there oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, some good news do, we? do tell yeah, um while i was taking my siesta uh we got informed that uh joey uh, tysick our production coordinator rolled the big white van over to lake orion high school and uh, we're going to try to get a live shot of it. Joe's going to grab, our production manager is going to grab his camera and go out and he'll send a live feed back, hopefully, before we get out of here. That van is almost filled. Awesome. Really? So Lake Orion High School students came through huge today for the food drive on their donations. And we got to say Matt Pfeiffer at Northern Wholesale Flooring, one of our uh, uh, two-day sponsors with us, an all-around awesome guy and a big supporter of Owen TV and everything Lake Orion. Uh, his uh, business collected a, a ton of food, and we also got that in the lobby as well. So the, the physical donations are coming in. The ca like we said this morning, I put it on Facebook, said the cash donations are kind of coming in a little bit by a little bit, but the food, the actual physical donations are coming in uh, at a nice clip. So we're right. so happy to have the van almost filled. Uh, we're hopefully we can get a shot of that coming up soon. So. Oh, he's ready to go outside now. So if he throws a, maybe we play a tune while he, he's our background image. So let's figure out what we're going to play. How about uh, Jambalaya? Two chords. Did I play okay. this one before? Is that Two what chords. we're having for lunch, baby? Oh, no, you haven't played it before. <laughs> oh, George. It's a what B, are you? It's a B flat and a F. B oh, flat yeah. And B flat and F. B flat and F. Oh, you can do it. guitar you can players do it. hate B flat. Oh, I do. It's in the <laughs> middle. It's not on the dots. I know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Goodbye, Joe. You got to go. Oh, me, oh, my, oh. Me got to pull the road down on my own. I keep on the sweetest 
one of me, oh my own. Son of a gun, we're gonna have big fun on the bio. Jambalaya, crepes, pie, Billy Gumbo. For tonight, I'm gonna see my Jeremio. Big guitar, fill fruit jar, and the gale. Son of a gun, we're gonna have big fun. I don't oh, mind yeah, two chords. that's fun. I can see the palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> and the hammocks. So, boo-boo's around, fun, we're laughing, having a good time, right? That's what music's all about, right? Yes, it is. Do we, uh, Tessa, do we have any shots from the truck? Oh, you showed it? I missed it. I was too busy. Oh, was it full? Oh, okay. That's awesome. Uh, who am I? I'm just here. I'm just the guy with a guitar, right? The typical the guitar player, not paying attention the, to anybody else. I was watching else. on the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I missed it. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad we could see it. And uh, it's funny, uh, technology, right? We have all this technology, and uh, we had equipment that malfunctioned uh, for us for the food drive, and we found out we could use our phones with a free little app, and Joe's wandering over free, getting those shots with his own cell see? phone. So really? How about worked that? Worked out great. Yep. Okay, what time do we have? We are nine minutes to the top of the hour. Oh, we have to stop this. I fun? know it's gonna it's gonna conclude here in about uh, nine minutes. Uh, but I, I, I know if we're getting sad with these but beautiful I, feet. But I, that oh, oh uh, beautiful feet. So oh, no one can hear one you, Tracy. So we're, we're talking about uh, uh, decorative feet. Today. She's having a good time. Of course. You're feeling the rhythm through the feet, yes, the soles, right? Yep. So uh, one last time before. Uh, I know 10 minutes is quite a long jam, but I'd like to say just to do official some business real quick. The food drive continues tomorrow uh, or tonight, actually. Watch tonight because we have concert performances uh, for the rest of the evening and into the early morning hours. Uh, 8 a.m. on Thursday, the DIY uh, uh, programming day begins for the food drive in its fourth day. So, uh, yeah, so we have more performance after we're done. Uh, viewers can watch uh, performances and concerts from over the last summer, which are some fabulous, yeah, fabulous right. shows. Yes, there was. So we want you to tune in there, and we want to thank our sponsors again. Without them, we couldn't do what we had, uh, the collections we've had so far. And we'd like to thank the Lake Orion High School students and the video uh, production class, uh, Mr. Smith over there, and the crew for uh, collecting all that food um, and getting it to us uh, today. We are going to make another run at the end of the week because... One run isn't going to cut it over at the high school because the kids are really uh, coming through for fish today. So 
That's uh, my official business. What do we have? About eight minutes to go? Seven or so? Tessa? About seven? Six. Six minutes. All right. What do we want to do? We got. We can do either uh, House of the Rising Sun, or we that's a fun one. Or we can do the jam that we talked about. We can. Uh, whatever you prefer. Want I can, to do I the can jam? get a little. I can get a. What well, they say? A little dirty on my sound. I can. All right. I put a little. All like right. The House of the Rising Sun. I so do I. Listen. Before we conclude, I just want to say there is so much wonderful, incredible power in music, mm. and it's been absolutely a blast to play with uh, both of you guys today. Well, I'm glad you said that because I want to thank you, Peggy, because our discussion and your encouragement is why this is happening. Oh, we got to back down. Whoa, <laughs> let me get rid of this. George. <laughs> he was rocking out earlier. <laughs> you know, the pauses in music are just as important as the notes. <laughs> so, yeah, right. So, but I, I just want to thank you both uh, for what, uh, you know, our little discussion turned into this and a whole bunch yeah. of fun. And um, I want to do this again. And we want to okay. have more music in the studio here at ONTV. If you play an instrument or something, you got a band or want to sing, this is the place to do it. We have the cameras here. We record it and we have a lot of fun. Um, we're trying to get a jam circle going with different instruments yeah. and stuff. We, we want to get more activity since we can now. We have a big band coming in. Yes. Big 18 piece band coming in. And, and I'll tell you, this is a great, great, great studio to do that with. Yeah. And, and we can run it live. We can do a recording. Right. We can do a whole bunch of stuff with it. So this, this is your community television st uh, station here, Orient Neighborhood Television at the Orion Center, 1349 Joslin Road. Get those donations in, and shall we try to play them out, George? Sure. <laughs> Let's do it. We've already started once. <laughs> <laughs>
was fun. Are we still we rolling? Still on? I don't even know if we're on or off or what. We're still on. Still on. Oh, hey. Now you can have. Oh, <laughs> next one's gonna start. We don't know if we wanna. Anyway, Woo. we made it through. That was fun. <laughs> she was really hitting those drums. So oh, yeah, again, my arms are sore. music's fun as you can see. Smiles on her face. We're having a great time. Having here. a great time. You can't go wrong. At ONTV, just yep. send in your money <laughs> <laughs> to fish. Send 100% goes to fish. All right, we want to thank all of you guys for coming out today. Tuning in 12 to noon. We'll see you tomorrow at noon as well. Um, I think we can put maybe a total up and we'll say goodbye. All right, give me five, George. Woohoo! All right. Yeah. All right.